GT Technical Teardown. I'm sorry, a one wheel GTS Technical Teardown. So let's get into it, eh? So there's a few things that I'm definitely curious about with this. Which is, what differences can we find in the motor? Is there any similarities between the GTS axle and the GT axle, which was actually discovered most of the ratios that you see that are out there were found right here <clears throat> in this shop, but I'm very proud of that. So we're going to continue on and we're going to forget all about the fun we had on this thing the other night because it's raining out and I want to badger this thing because I would tell people that the number one thing that you should do to your board if you care about it and you ride anywhere where there's moisture is waterproof your board. I don't really care so much uh, that the bearings are NSK. I understand I'm not gonna be able to unplug the battery, so I don't even feel like going in there. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Those are kind of like my thoughts here. The biggest thing that I'm curious about, I would say, is the motor. Is the motor the same? Bob already did a very fantastic technical teardown of a one-wheel GTS the first day he got it. I definitely had to ride it once just to see what was going on. I loved it. So, let's get to it. I came up with this method of dissembling a board back when I was running Stoke like this. Just because I was working on a lot of pints then and people were notoriously bending the hall sensor pins on the pints. Trusty Rive 8. I'm Rive 8 gang, unfortunately, for anyone who, who cares. So. Cool. We got to the part we wanted. So. We know that the inside of that controller box has things that are different about it that we do want to see. But first things first, let's pull the state. Now, what did I just do? I just put the axle bolts back in. Why? So that I can grab something and so that the thing that is holding the harness into the motor doesn't shake around loose when you're doing whatever you need to do to the motor. So when you take your board apart, take the motor off, leave this axle carrier on and put your axle bolts back in. That is going to save so many people a giant world of hurt when it comes to their one wheel and uh, the motor harnesses on these things. They're, uh, they're just in a little bit more of a precocious position than they were before. Uh, it's pretty easy to nick one, but it's also easy to not do it if you're careful and you're paying attention to what you're doing. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is definitely install lifesavers onto this thing. Uh, the, the rims are notoriously, you know, not, not fantastic just because of a little bit of less rubber, but I'm going to say that I really enjoyed the performance treaded tire. Um, so overall... I'm kind of super happy about that. I don't know where my calipers are. So this is going to probably present a, somewhat of an issue. <laughs> I should have told you before I started this whole thing. I'm going to have to have my non, non amazing ones that are going to help out.
take 30 seconds to try to find these. If I can't. Then I'm just gonna lay it down for right now. And no, I wouldn't trust my own eye on this to be 100% precise, but let's grab a GT motor and figure this out. Uh -huh. You know what? This axle is thicker again. Alright, now I gotta find my calipers. The axle looks objectively thicker to me. I think that they went back to the, the XR stator personally, um, based on what I'm seeing here so far. Yes. So we have gone back to XR XR thickness stators. You can see it because it's very noticeable when you go from uh, an XR to a pint and to a GT that it's like that. So Okay, so just in case you're wondering, the GTS does appear to have a thicker, a slightly thicker O-ring than um, than the uh, XR, but it is also thinner than the GT. So. I guess they listened. It'd be the only thing that I could really say about it. Because here's your GT and your XR O ring, and here is your GTS. So it does have a different O ring, it does have a different axle thickness, and it does have a different O ring groove. Which means we have to run a new model with new data on this because that's actually really, really good news for everybody that is listening to me rant about this stuff. Is that was so important for us to take care of. But, you know, this, let's check one more thing. Let's check the solder going from the wire harness to the motor PCB. We got a press tool for this. I need to find 
So, okay, and then the other thing too is that you can totally tell the difference in the quality in which the hardware was installed into the motor. It doesn't look like I'm going to have any overheating issues in this motor based on what I can see looking in front of me on this PCB. Um, they've even kind of put a lot of conformal coating on here, so that's... Um, that was a really, just really nice feature. There, I guess I could add a little bit of solder to the home one right here. But the point is, is that the pins are here and they're bent down straight. So they're, you know, it's like the fingers fit right in the knuckles here. Because the way that you want to picture this is that the solder pads don't start inside of the groove of my fingers. They start on the actual top of my hand. So when you open up your one wheel and you see this and you see a nice dab of solder connecting that leg very you know close or on the metal pad that's fantastic remember that has to be bent 90 degrees if you look at the gts they're all a little bit off like they look like that and so they're not making a really good contact they're cold soldered and they can be repaired for sure but sometimes the damage is already done so uh, anytime someone buys a brand new gt pretty much just automatically go and do that stuff if these motors are the same as the ones they're putting in the gts and again you know what am i i don't understand how i'm actually going to count the windings to get the kv out of the motor um god i'm so happy you can you can visually see that it is a different axle and it is the xr axle again so I don't know how that happened. I really, you know, to this day, I'm trying to really figure out like what went down in a meeting room somewhere or what went down in a factory that caused me to switch that out so that it was so vulnerable to breaking. Uh, I have to believe that it's not malicious. I have to believe it was overlooked. You know, there's a lot of reasons why these things can happen and so blaming someone's ill will is uh, it's easier to have a focal point to stare at I suppose but it is not right so so you can see I just have actually you know what I gotta undo this again But again, I'm using that wire harness cover to uh, protect the wire harness. That's what it's there for. So definitely use it in all your stuff. If that's the only thing you take away from the video today, then fantastic. But I'm a happy camper because, again, I can now, with all fact, with this thicker axle, say that Future Motion has officially done and corrected all the things that I really wanted to be corrected in a more aggressive Dashboard. Um, so I think that it's a little safer to go out and send it balls to the wall because it looks like it's just about the same motor axle thickness that we saw in the XR. And so again, I am happy. I think it's awesome that they listened. I think it's cool that they made the improvement. Yes, I think it really freaking sucks. That nothing was done about it sooner, but there's nothing I can do about that now. I learned the lesson. They obviously learned the lesson because otherwise they would have just left it alone. I've been doing this for a long time. 
It is the only reason I am comfortable using an impact while doing something like this. So the question is, is am I going to install a clock carrier still? I am. Um, and the reason I'm going to do this is because uh, I believe in my own products and yeah, I mean there's that part of it too. Uh, there's I guess there's a lot to it, but I'm going to do this in a different video because um, I want to move this one to what we're finding out about this. This is really what I wanted to know. This is the first thing that I check on everyone's board if they bring their um, GT to me and there's a problem with the motor cogging. Uh, I know exactly where to go and what to look at. The big thing that we wanted to see was the axle thickness and we wanted to check uh, the O-ring groove depth, which have both been improved. Um, we all know that the capacitors and some of the MOSFETs and some of the components inside the controller have been improved, but otherwise they're exactly the same. Again, the motor connector for this is the exact same as the GT. The size is exactly the same. And I think there were some people saying that the um, there was extra slits in the motor connector. There's not. It's the exact same motor connector for the GT. Everything looks the same in there. It looks like new bearings. Uh, it doesn't necessarily look like there's better windings in there. It just looks like that the hardware installation for the PCB and where I usually see the faults are really stamped down. And again, we've got a... <laughs> We got a way thicker axle, so we know that the XR axle is like 60-70% um, stronger than the GT axle. So you've already got clock carriers installed on your GTS. Pretty cool? Yeah, I think so too. And if you add the clock carriers to that, you're just kind of reinforcing that strength of that bond. I'm going to spend the rest of my time here putting some uh, lifesavers on this board just to check out. I've been told that the lifesavers uh, won't set with the performance treaded on, and again, I don't know how much of that was done on purpose or how much of that was done to uh, create this tire in the first place to give it a depth